Macaque monkeys love juicy ripe bananas and warm water. They don't like icy cold water. In an experiment conducted many years ago, a monkey in a cage went to get some bananas from the top of a stepladder and got squirted with water, so it left the bananas alone. A second monkey came in. The first monkey tried to warn the second monkey not to go after the bananas. The second monkey hesitated, but still tried to get the bananas and got squirted with water. A third monkey was introduced and the process repeated. The fourth and fifth monkeys introduced to the cage listened to the first three monkeys and never went after those juicy delicious bananas from the top of that ladder. What they didn't know was the water had been turned off after the fourth monkey had entered the cage. When the sixth, seventh and eighth monkey were put into the cage, the first, second and third were taken out. That left no monkeys in the cage who had been squirted with water, a bunch of juicy bananas not being eaten and generations of monkeys inheriting best practice that provides a lower quality of life than might otherwise be experienced if they could just get past the inherited wisdom of their tribe. Now, normally consultants use this story to highlight how people are like monkeys suffer from groupthink and repeat behaviours they inherit without ever really knowing why. The reason I've opened with this story is because all of my life, in every boardroom and shop floor I've visited across Europe, in aerospace, automotive, defence, civil engineering space and a host of other sectors, working as a leader, consultant or employee, I felt like the monkey in the cage who knew there had to be a way to get those damn bananas and share them with everyone. I just couldn't accept what a thousand metaphorical monkeys have told me along the way, which is basically put up and shut up, i.e. stop questioning the way things are and know your place. That just wasn't me, and instead I spent the last few decades sharing a different view wherever and whenever I could. Along the way I met Levent Turk and discovered, much to my relief, he's cut from the same cloth. He's a kindred spirit who also can't accept the idea that the current way of doing things is good enough. That is, he doesn't agree with those who go through life thinking the bananas are out of reach. Hi, David is right. I also couldn't rest my mind. It seemed always there had to be a better way. My journey from when I was a young man working at Toyota in Japan to becoming a senior leader in the Toyota plant I helped establish in Turkey. And in my later career, to the boardrooms of global vehicle manufacturing OEMs and their first tier suppliers. Every experience convinced me. There was still so much more to do if leaders of other organizations were to develop a high performance culture which could compete with the one I'd experienced in my early career. It's this shared view that leaders can reach that low hanging fruit and don't have to suffer that inspired us to launch this series of training courses for leaders in industry. What we've learned through our careers, after many false starts and a lot of time passing us by, is if you want to change anything, you have to first know how it works and why it works that way. When the challenge is changing human behaviour, every question why leads back to how and why the human brain works as it does. Our own brains are as fallible as the next. Take our own experiences. David and I learned the same way everyone does. In my early career, I was lucky enough to grow up in a continuous improvement culture. But when I stepped outside of Toyota 16 years later, I failed to create the same systems, strategy and culture in the next automotive OEM I joined. It was only then I understood that to overcome a fear of imagined water type behavior, the objective is to get all the monkeys to change their beliefs. Being one person with a different view isn't enough. Sometimes, not even if you are the CEO. I've seen the same thing across continents and decades. I've met multiple leaders who wield the power of knowledge or position and then blame and conspire to undermine anyone they feel threatened by. They'll manage projects, not always that well, but tick boxes while throwing responsibility over the wall and other people under the bus. Despite being a toxic influence on the culture throughout the business, they survive through manipulation and intimidation. In most cases, these people are so blind to themselves while surviving their often political environment, they fail to recognise what they are doing to other brains. I've lost some battles against people like this, but also when I've helped leaders see the negative influence their approach and systems can have on people, I've also had my greatest turnaround successes. 
It turns out to convey key principles about complex issues in life, like explaining the workings of the human brain, the best medium is scientifically proven to be storytelling. However, every human brain interprets words in its own unique way, relying in large part upon the prior experience it has been exposed to. That's the reason why we see the world differently. To see the world in similar ways requires human brains view subjects through a new lens. David and Levant created this training course to deliver this new lens to leaders, to address the minutiae of the biggest issue in business, creating a high performance and continuous improvement culture. Both men have worked in industry internationally for over 30 years each. They lived in a world that saw people angry, frustrated, fearful, stressed, and dreading what they would have to contend with every day at every level in every business they worked with. They couldn't ignore their intuition. There had to be a better way. All the evidence showed there had to be something missing from the current best practice. People's disengagement, lack of empowerment, stress, and other negative emotions had to have root causes that could be detailed, understood, and improved. To find out what was missing, to get to root cause of culture change and sustainable performance and improvement, they both got busy, searching and studying. Eventually, they found the answers. Alluded to in philosophy, investigated in psychology, but detailed in brain science. And with that discipline at their fingertips, they now see the world of organisational culture and change through a neuroscience lens. The price they paid for this knowledge was time. It took over 30 years, spanning five decades. Their natural curiosity got the better of them and they wondered if they could have seen what they see today a lot earlier in their career. Once David and Levant met each other and shared their stories, that thought evolved. And they went on a quest to explore the best way to share their knowledge. A combination of their studies and first-hand experience feature in the story told and referred to in this course.